Guru Nation, welcome back. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for your support. Really means a lot to me. The questions really do keep me going. Let me tell you, 12 years of running a YouTube channel, you think you would run out of content at some point, but you don't. And it's because of you and viewers like you. So make sure you like, subscribe, comment, share. Really means a lot to me. Reach out to me anytime. Underneath is all my social links and my email is dan at theclinicaltrailsguru.com. This is my book. This is today's question comes from somebody who became a monitor. And so I'm going to refer to, please refer this like college, right? Please refer to chapter five on monitoring guys, by the way, thank you for helping make this a number one bestseller. Okay. This person asked when you have a, when you're doing a monitoring visit report, okay. How, how do you actually word the the findings so and it just so happens and i hope i hope the reason it's going to take me a while a little longer than normal usually i just record and upload right away not even need to edit the reason this one might take me a little longer is as it so happens serendipity i have a siv today for my site and my monitor a very seasoned monitor who i have interviewed before She's going to come and I'm going to ask her to kind of go through her report, how she words things. So you can compare her style versus my style. I'm actually curious as well. When I monitor, I don't monitor anymore, but as recently as just a few months ago, I was still monitoring. Um, compare, share notes, field notes of a CRA. So here's what a report looks like. This is like site qualification visit report. But every visit has a report, SSV, SIV, IMV, COV. If you don't know what those are, get the book or watch the five-hour video. So every section, and the students of our CRA Academy, they know this. When they do the internship, they're, they're forced to do at least one of these reports or they don't get their resume done. So every section, for example, review of study documents, it's a checklist like this. And then it has a comments section like this, every section. Okay, so here's a section on patient recruitment. Here's a section on facilities. Every section has a comment section. So there's the checklist that says yes or no. And then there's a comment section, All right? As you see here, regulatory, checklist, yes or no, comments. So the checklist obviously is easy. You just check it. You don't need to think about what to write. But in the comments, that's where you got to write. The first thing I was taught, like on day one of monitoring, is always refer to yourself in the third person. So don't say, I found 1572 uh, unsigned by PI. You want to write the CRA observed that's the way I read it, the CRA observed or the CRA discovered that the 1572 page two was, unsigned, was not signed by PI. CRA issued this as an action item. If you discussed, if you happen to have discussed this with the PI during your visit, you wanna list in the comments what the discussion was about. If you only had time to discuss it with the coordinator, you wanna discuss what, what it was about and any ramifications of this. So for example, on the 1572, maybe there's no real ramifications other than there is no 1572. That's kind of not a good thing. Okay, that might be a violation. There's no way that a site would have been activated without a 1572. But let's say <clears throat> the site uh, added a new location to their 1572. So on page three, there's a new location and they revised the 1572 but the PI hasn't signed it yet. All right, that's not necessarily as big of a deal, but there's still follow out issues that arise from that. Action items for sure, which go into all comments that need actions from the sites, go into this section. And every report's different based on what company you work for. This is my own CROs. These are action items and you can add more boxes as a CRA, just right click, add new row, boom. And you can make this as long as needed. So not only do you write in the comments section of these reports, 
but you have to generate action items and those are logs. What I do is I will take from my comments, whatever is actions are needed and I will just copy and paste it into that log. So I'm not rewriting, I'm not rethinking. That's, the, that's my style for doing the report is I write the report as I'm doing it in the comments, in the comments I write my findings and then later I'll go through each section and copy and paste. So I'll reread my report and go through each section and copy and paste what I need to add to the action item log. Now your CRO or your sponsor might have a secondary log, like besides the report, just internally that they need. So it's the same thing. You'll just copy and paste this action items. Um, sometimes there's action items that uh, involve patient safety issues. And those obviously require more comments. Those require you to understand what the steps are as far as the IRB notification, letting the IRB know, because remember the IRB is in charge of patient safety, um, maybe retraining of the staff. So it's not so much how to write the report that's important. I mean, you find an issue and you write in the third person, the CRA observed and the CRA discussed with and the CRA listed this as an action item. That's basically simple. The complicated part and the part, the reason why it, you need to have experience before you start monitoring is to understand in the wild, right? What observations and what findings trigger what cascade of events, what it should trigger. That's the complicated part. And I can't really help you in a video other than continuously making like new scenarios, new videos. The five hour video has some, like at least the fundamentals. So you know when the fundamentals, like good clinical practice has been violated. You won't know when a protocol has been violated unless you have a protocol to monitor. So you can't learn that theoretically, but GCP for sure. Um, so you just learn a lot by doing and the cascade of events that follows a finding is really why you make your money as a CRA. So I'm curious to see what my CRA says. We have a SIV. So I'm just going to ask you, hey, you mind like sharing two or three minutes on how you write your report, your SIV report, just maybe if you don't want to put specifics about this study, just in general. And she seemed open to it last time. So hopefully it's going to be right now. If not, just no Guru Nation. I tried. I tried for you guys. Uh, but not every monitor is comfortable, and I understand doing it. But good thing I was a monitor, too, not that long ago. So stay tuned. This video is either going to end or it's going to have a couple minutes with my CRA. Take care. Like, subscribe, comment, share. Either way, bye-bye. So you guys are lucky, Guru Nation. I got a real-life monitor, Sandra. You might recognize her from the last video we did. She's my monitor here at one of the sites that I'm running in Yuma, Arizona, and um, I promised you guys I'd get her opinion. So, the person's asking, Sandra, how do you, when you, let's say you're doing a visit, like you are today, right? Mm -hmm. How do you, as a monitor, translate, like when you have a finding to the action items, so first of all, how do you document it? Like, how do you write it? Sentence structure, maybe. And then how do you transfer that from the comments into the action items? And then if there's any other logs, every they know every CRO and sponsor is different. But just in general. Um, in general, usually I state what uh, I, do. I put a brief description of what it is. And then I would also put what action needs to be taken. So let's say... Um, the DOE log is missing uh, a staff member, I would say um, this staff member um, put their information or what their role is is now listed on the DOE log um, site to update DOE log and provide a copy to see a, see a CRA or something along those lines. Um, sometimes there is a time limit required for it. I would include that if there isn't, I just leave it open to like the next visit, something along those lines, but I just make it specific to where I'm able to follow up and collect that specific item. And is it like, 
thus you, when you write it, you put the CRA observed or the CR. Do you write in the third person or do you put I? No, I, it's always third person. You, I usually do third person. I think that's the norm for most um, tasks or you know action items or reports or anything like that. We do third person. Okay, and then when you find something, let's say it's like not urgent, but whether it's urgent or not, if it's an action item, do you literally just copy and paste from your comments and rewrite it a little bit so it fits in the box, or how do you do it? Um, I phrase it so that it matches specifically what's missing. I wouldn't really, and I guess it would also depend on what the comment itself is. But I always just write my action items separately from my what my comment is in my report. Okay, and then is there any other log, like for your particular CRO, that you transfer these action items to? Some CROs have other logs. No, it should, well, for most CROs, at least that I'm familiar with, it should auto populate in your CTMS once you um, enter your. Uh, complete your report, it should populate into your, you know, action items list or action items log. So okay. it should be electronic and you should be able to export it. In the CTM. Okay. Yeah. All right. There you go. Well, thank you very much, Sander. Appreciate it. Thank you. Bye-bye, guys. Take care.